Today I'm going to cover safety issues and then I'm going to go over uh, tools and supplies that you'll be needing. Safety is the number one issue that you need to be concerned with. Uh, this is a dangerous hobby and you need to do everything you can to minimize the risks. First, never try to drink and make fireworks. It's a deadly combination and uh, do not do it. Um, always wear eye protection. Always wear cotton clothing. Um, minimize the amount of uh, materials that you have exposed at one time. If you are uh, making um, powder, make it in small amounts. And uh, when you're done with something, make sure it's put away. Um, covered up when it's not being used. And uh, just try not to have anything open that you absolutely does, do not have to have open. Uh, wear a face mask and, and or a respirator depending on what you're mixing. Um, definitely if you're working with the charcoals, they get everywhere and, they, and you, it is called airflow charcoal for a reason. Um, keep any of your finished components in a safe storage area. Uh, don't have those laying around. Once the uh, material is put together, then it, it must be stored. Uh, be aware of any ha hazardous chemical combinations. Some things you do not want to mix together, and so um, as a novice, please only go by uh, formulas that you know are safe and are come from a safe source. Um, any kind of hazardous tasks like ball milling or uh, mixing some of the chemicals, if at all possible, do that outside in a well-ventilated area um, away from any hazards. And try and keep your work area clean and uncluttered. Um, definitely make sure you clean up after you finish and so the next time it, everything will be ready to go. Do not get in a hurry. Um, almost nothing happens good quickly in fireworks, so except shooting them, of course. Um, so always take your time and be careful. And um, really that's about all I can say about safety. Just absolutely keep that in mind. Okay, next I'll be going over tools and um, I'll be displaying these items on the screen and going over these one at a time. Here's a picture of some of the more common tools that we'll be using. The first tool is a rawhide mallet. Uh, these, of course, would be non-sparking. And this particular one is uh, number three, which is 10 ounces. And the higher the number, the heavier the mallet. And that just seems to be a comfortable um, weight for me. The next would be cardboard containers. These are actually uh, made for putting soup in. And uh, you can get them in different sizes. They're good for storing chemicals, uh, mixed composition, and I use them for stars as well. The next would be wooden hobby sticks. Uh, they're like tongue depressors, and those are used for stirring up comp uh, composition, and uh, also I use them for scooping small amounts of uh, chemicals out. Next would be anvil cutters, and you use these for cutting a uh, fuse, and instead of a slicing uh, motion, it's actually a cutting edge on like a flat anvil surface. The next is a hole punch, and yes, this one is metal. Uh, you'd be punching holes in shell halves um, and in discs, uh, cardboard discs, and uh, you'd be doing that um, on top of wood so there wouldn't be a sparking hazard. And there's also cork cutters that you can get, and they actually uh, do a turning motion to cut. The next tool would be uh, aluminum scoop. And you can also use uh, plastic measuring cups and plastic scoops and so forth, So as long as it's not sparking. Last is a brass awl, and it's just used for punching holes like in time fuse. Now I'll go over some supplies that you'll be needing. Okay, first would be some sort of marker. Uh, you'll use that for labeling, of course, and um, marking. And beneath the marker is uh, rubber gloves. You'll be needing rubber gloves 
and um, I would suggest wearing them because some of these chemicals could really uh, irritate your skin. Next would be a dust mask, and occasionally you might want to wear respirators uh, as well when you're uh, dealing with some of the more toxic chemicals. Next is a cloth or paper uh, measuring tape. Next would be a good pair of safety glasses. Next would be cotton string, and uh, you probably want to get a good size roll of that because you'll be using that an awful lot. Next would be a cutter of some sort, and I would suggest a razor blade. Next would be wax paper. I would just keep a roll of it handy. Next would be saran wrap. Uh, once again, I just keep a roll of that. And the final thing that uh, I don't have highlighted there is tissue paper. And um, any, any kind of tissue paper like it would come in a present will work. Okay, just a few more supplies that are uh, mundane and then we'll get on to some fun supplies. I promise. Okay, the first item is uh, denatured alcohol, and I'd go ahead and get a large container while you're getting it. And the next thing will be spray bottles, uh, uh, not just one, get a couple of them, um, and uh, you'll be putting alcohol in one and water in one. Okay, speaking of water, you also want to just keep some around, like a gallon jug or something, uh, in case you need more water. Hey, I did warn you that this was an expensive hobby. All right, on to the fun supplies. Okay, the first thing is a glue gun, and I'd probably get a decent one while you're getting. The next thing would be shell halves. So whatever size shells you decide to build, you need the shell halves. Next would be lift cups. Uh, if you elect to buy some, um, I prefer to buy some rather than making them, but uh, that's not necessarily something you have to have. Okay, next you'll be needing some gummed tape uh, for taping up the shells, and you probably want to get several different sizes because depending on the size of the shell uh, will depend on the size of the tape that you need to use. Okay, the next thing you need is paper tape, and this is the same sort you use to tape up boxes, and um, I buy mine from the same places you can get U-Haul supplies. Okay, you'll also be needing an assortment of paper tubes, and I'll show you how those are used later. Okay, next we're going to talk about fuses. The first one I show is called Black Match. Um, this is what you'll find inside of a quick match. It, uh, you do have to have a uh, license to buy anything like this. Um, however, you can make your own quick match, and it's basically just cotton string with uh, impregnated with a uh, black powder solution. And uh, there's places online that will show you how to make that. Next type of fuse that you might want to go ahead and get, and that's some uh, various Visco fuse. Um, and you would use some that maybe is, has quick burn time for some of your components that you put in your shells. Okay, you're also going to need uh, time fuse, and uh, this you can also buy without a license. Okay, the next is quick match. Quick match uh, is basically black match with a paper sleeve, um, and it will burn up to 500 feet per second. Um, the three types that I have shown here are paper, which is the most common, I guess, and the other two are waterproof, and you'll see these, um, primarily I see these on chains, and uh, you do have to have a um, license to buy this. You can make quick match yourself. Um, I have seen kits online that they use a fast visco fuse in, uh, and then they just say the fuse and then the sleeves, and you incorporate the two yourself. You can also make your own paper tubes and make your own black match to put in it. Okay, last but not least, uh, you need a good set of scales. And uh, there's various ones of these uh, available. These are typically kitchen scales. 
and it uh, doesn't matter if it's pounds or uh, grams. Um, the formulas will be usually based on percentages of each chemical, so it's easily converted over to um, either measurement. There will be a few other tools that you'll be needing. Um, one in particular will be screens uh, for sifting um, compounds, and I will uh, show you that in the next video. Okay, well, that's it for this video. Uh, join us next time when we talk about uh, all the various types of uh, black powder. See you then.